Hey everyone, I am Miss Hu, your physics teacher. In this video lesson, we are going to go through DC and AC generators. Now, in SPM physics, you have to learn about both, while in IGCSE physics, you only need to learn about AC generators. You can watch the entire video if you'd like to find out more about generators as a whole, but for IGCSE physics, you only need to focus on AC generators. Again, for SPM physics, you need to learn about both. Now, a reminder, as always, there's a lot to know about this topic beyond what is covered in this video lesson. So if you'd like to find out more, please feel free to do your own research, or you can watch my other educational videos. What I'll be covering in this video lesson is just the information that you would need in order to answer the questions in your examinations. Now, before we jump into this topic, a quick reminder that DC stands for direct current and AC stands for alternating current. So DC generators use direct current while AC generators use alternating current. Now, before we jump into this topic, there are some prerequisites. You do need to understand electromagnetic induction. If you haven't learned it, or if you don't quite understand it, please do your revision first on that topic, and you can do so by watching my video on electromagnetic induction. Now, although this is not necessary, I also suggest a prerequisite of DC motors. So if you haven't learned or you don't understand DC motors, please watch my video on DC motors. Like I said, it's not really necessary, but it will really help. So based on that, I'm going to start this video lesson first with a, an explanation of DC motor in general. If you'd like to know more about DC motors, please watch my video on DC motors. I'm not going to explain this in detail. This is just a quick overview using a summary of what was covered in DC motors. So a DC motor is a motor that uses direct current, for example, dry cell. The motor has a set of permanent magnets to create a magnetic field and a wire coil, which is in this case the armature, that is connected to that direct current power supply. The current flows in opposite directions on the wire, creating a couple, which is a pair of forces in the opposite direction. The couple produces a rotation, and with continuous current flow, there will be continuous rotation in the same direction. To allow for this continuity, this armature or wire coil must be connected to the circuit using a split ring commutator and carbon brushes. Now, the motor uses power supply in order to produce force that will cause the rotation. If you can understand DC motor, then it's very easy to understand a DC generator because a DC generator has the exact same setup. The only difference is that it doesn't have power supply because the term generator here refers to a machine that's generating electricity. So for example, if we look at the DC generator, it will have the exact same setup as a DC motor, but this time we are going to remove the power supply and in place we're going to put for example, a galvanometer in order to observe the current flow. So instead of a galvanometer, you can put a device over here, like a lamp, so that it can light up. Or you can put a motor here so that it can spin. So a DC generator is exactly the same as a DC motor, with the exception of no power supply. Because the generator here, now this is the power supply. It's going to be producing current for the device. So in this case, the generator is the one that is going to be rotating. That means we have to apply a force to allow for the rotation. So for example, we can rotate the wire coil, say, uh, anti-clockwise. And using Fleming's right-hand rule, we can determine the direction of the current. But to determine the direction of the current, we need to do this one wire at a time. So let's say we look at the left wire. So we've got right hand, remember force, magnet current. Now, if the wire is being rotated 
anti-clockwise, that means this wire is being forced to move downwards, while this wire is being forced to move upwards. So we've got a magnetic field. This has to point north to south. The force is moving downwards, which means the current is flowing towards you, towards you. So this will be flowing this way. If the wire moving down produces a current this way, obviously, this, because it's the opposite direction, the current will be the opposite. But if you want to double check with the Fleming's right hand rule, again, north to south. Now, the force is moving upwards, the current is flowing away from you, away from you. So it's flowing this way. So this is how we can determine the direction of the current flow in the generator. Remember with the split ring commutator, this is a DC generator because this will produce current flow in one direction only. Now, if we want to produce alternating current, it will have a similar setup, but of course, there are some modifications that we need to make. So we will still have the coil placed in the permanent magnetic field, but we can't have a split ring commutator. So I'm just going to draw the galvanometer here. So the modification we need to make in this case is we need to put two rings instead of one. So here, I'm just going to make further modifications. In fact, I'm going to redraw this for clarity. We're going to have to put two rings one in front of the other, and one side of the coil will be connected to one ring and the other side connected to the other ring. And this will be connected to the circuit which we want to power. Now these two circular connectors are known as slip rings. We still have the carbon brushes to allow for the continuous rotation. Let me write that over there, carbon brushes. Put it a bit closer so that you can see the label by proximity. So those are the carbon brushes. So each side is connected to one ring. Now, if you'd like to find out how this can produce alternating current, I will simplify it here. Although it's in 2D, hopefully you will still be able to understand. So let's say we rotate the armature anti-clockwise. So like just now, we know this wire is moving down and this wire is moving up. We have already determined the direction of the current, right? We know the current is flowing towards you on the left and away from you on the right. So I'm going to add that to this coil. So you can see here the current is flowing like this into the bottom slip ring, through the circuit, out through the top slip ring, and back into the circuit, which means that current is flowing like this across the circuit. Now, how does this become an alternating current supply? So if I were to label the coil, a, B, C, D. Right now, A, B is on the left, while C, D is on the right. But if we rotate the coil, after one half cycle, C, D will move to the left, and A, B will move to the right. And what happens is the slip rings will also rotate, but they still stay in the same position. So physically, they will have rotated, but they're still in the same place. So to show you what happened, I'm going to duplicate this so that we can have a direct comparison. So now remember, AB has moved to the right while CD is now on the left. So we'll have AB here and CD on the left. Now AB, let's refer back to the previous diagram. AB is connected to the bottom slip ring while CD is connected to the top slip ring. Now, as the coil rotates, the slip rings will also rotate, which means that now on this slide, 
CD is now connected to the top slip ring, while AB is connected to the bottom slip ring. How this changes the current direction? In the coil cutting across a magnetic field, the current direction has not changed because it's still rotating this way. This is still going down. This is still, this is see this side is still going down. This side is still going up. The current is still in this direction. The difference, of course, is that the current direction has changed. Previously, current was flowing from D to C to B to A. But now, current is flowing from A to B to C to D. Now, that's in the armature, but let's find out what happened to the current flow in this circuit. So you can see, now current is flowing this way, so it's flowing away from here. So this current direction is no longer the same as it was before. So I'm going to remove that can see now that current is actually flowing out through this coil, out through this slip ring into AB, CD, coming into the top slip ring and flowing this way. So now current is flowing in this direction across the galvanometer. If you look at what was before, it was actually flowing upwards. So this is how the slip rings are able to change the direction of the current inside the circuit. So if we wanted to describe the function of the slip rings, we can say that the function of the slip rings is to change the direction current in the circuit every half cycle. So that's how the generators are able to generate current. So a quick comparison between DC and AC generators. These are screenshots from the earlier slides, so they're a little bit hard to see. So I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, over here, you can see in general, the DC and AC generators, they have pretty much the same setup with the permanent magnets and the wire coil or the armature. The big difference here is the connection between the armature to the circuit. So DC generator has one split ring commutator, while AC generator has two slip rings. So in this case, you can think of it as if there is one ring, one direction two rings, two directions. So in addition to knowing the difference in terms of the setup of the generators, you also need to know the shapes of the current flow that is produced. So before we go into the shape of the current graphs, we have to first understand how the shapes were produced. So I'll just go into a general overview first. Now on this slide, we have here the permanent magnets creating a magnetic field, which are the green lines. And let's say these two black circles represent the cross section of the wires in the armature. That means if we were looking at the generators from this viewpoint, so for example, if the eye was over here, from here, we will see the wires of this coil as two circles. So those are the two circles that are represented over here. Now, remember what you've learned in electromagnetic induction. The wires need to cut across the magnetic field lines in order to generate current. Now, the cutting could happen perpendicular or even at an angle. If it's moving parallel, then it's not cutting. The angle at which the wire moves across the magnetic fields influence the magnitude of the current or electromotive force that's being induced. The bigger the angle, the bigger the magnitude of the EMF or the current. The largest angle in this case is 90 degrees. It's always acute. You don't have obtuse angles. So just to help you visualize, let's say these are all the cross section of the wires at different positions. So here, I'm just going to connect the circles. Let's say 
these two are part of the coil when it's horizontal, this when it's vertical, and the rest are, well, when it's rotating in between. Now, although the wire is rotating, and you think of it, oh, it's a circular motion. But remember that when we talk about motion, it's always moving forward. From the wire's perspective, its motion is always forward. So its direction is always tangent to the circular direction. So when the wire is horizontal, it's actually moving this way. So if we look at the arrows, they are perpendicular to the magnetic field. Now, when the wire is at that angle, it's also moving at an angle that's now less than 90 degrees. And we don't measure the obtuse section. We always measure the acute angle. So that's why the largest angle is always 90 degrees. So at these points, that's the angle. Even here, you can see the angle is less than 90 degrees. At the vertical position, the wire is moving parallel to the magnetic field, or in terms of angles, zero degrees. It's not cutting the magnetic field when the coil is at a vertical position. So we find that throughout the motion, the angle is increasing and decreasing. So at this point, the largest angle decreases and then increases, decreases, increases, decreases, increases. So you'll find that the current is also changing. So how this could be represented as the current graph for the DC generator and the AC generator is like this. So for DC generators, we don't get straight line graphs. We don't get a current that's like the dry cell. Instead, we get current or EMF that is increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. It's like a sinusoidal wave, but it is only the positive part. The AC generator, on the other hand, we will get the shape similar to a sine graph. So although I've written here VT, this also applies for um, IT. That means instead of uh, EMF, it could also be current. So that's why for alternating current, we get this kind of shape. So you have to be aware that at the points here on the top, or rather the maximum points on whether it's a DC or AC current, it's the position where the coil is horizontal between the permanent magnets. That means at this position. So let's just draw the magnets here because that's where the angle is 90 degrees. When it's zero, the coil is vertical because the wires are now moving parallel to the magnetic field. So I'll write that here. So for the blue, it is when the coil is horizontal. While at green, when the values are zero, it's when the coil is vertical. Now, just another quick note. Now, although I've drawn the magnets here as flat magnets, sometimes you can come across uh, diagrams that have the magnets which are curved instead. In fact, this is the more common real life application when it comes to magnets whatever magnets, whatever coil that we use here, we've got a curved magnet. And the reason for the curved magnets is because this helps to focus the magnetic fields. The reason we want to focus the magnetic fields is so that more magnetic fields will be cut by the coil in the center area. And that's it for this video. So I hope you found this video educational and helpful. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for more lessons, solutions, and exam strategies from your physics teacher, Miss Hu. 
happy studying